I am indeed happy to be the one to have received instruction from my government to bestow upon Mr. Nixon uh, or higher decoration. This decoration, Mrs. Nixon, was established in 1821 by General San Martin, the liberator of Peru. The people of Peru, from one end to the other end of the nation, have happy memories of your visit to our country at the time of sorrow, after the great disaster. They are conscious of what you have done for them. And you certainly have accomplished a tremendous deal when it came to rehabilitate and to reconstruct the affected areas of my country. In recognition of what you have done, in recognition of the committees you have established here to assist and to help the Peruvian people, not only in rehabilitation, but also in reconstruction. My government wants to give you this honor. I will ask the First Lady of Peru to invest you with this order of the sun. And I will ask Senora Velasco to come near me and I will give her the band. It is a signal honor for me to receive this uh, decoration from the government of Peru. I accept it for the people of the United States who were glad to lend a helping hand to their neighbors in distress, the victims of a terrible earthquake. When Mrs. Velasco and I visited one badly hurt area, I was impressed with her deep concern and compassion for her people. We brought supplies at that time and also brought hope to them that we were going to work for reconstruction of their homes and rehabilitation. The Wildest Valley, an area of Peru known as Little Switzerland, was calm on May 30, 1970. But the following day, this calm was broken as the ocean floor just off the coastline buckled and snapped. Centuries of built-up pressure sent shattering tremors through 25,000 square miles of Peru. All over this area, roughly the size of New England, houses were shaken apart, leaving 500,000 people homeless. In the town of Huaraz, which stands at the upper end of the Wireless Valley, 80% of all the buildings were destroyed by the earthquake. The survivors were in a state of shock as they tried to comprehend the meaning of the devastation. Mrs. Richard Nixon was deeply disturbed when she learned of the Peruvian earthquake, which ultimately claimed nearly 60,000 dead and 100,000 injured. It was her decision to accompany special supplies to Peru. On June 27th, the President and Mrs. Nixon inspected the supplies totaling nearly 10 tons which would accompany the First Lady on her journey. On June 28th, Mrs. Nixon began the nearly eight-hour flight to Lima, Peru. It was her hope that by going to Peru personally, she might help focus the attention of people around the world on the plight of the Peruvians. She shared the considerable information she had gathered on the situation with members of the press who were to accompany her throughout the trip. During the flight, Mrs. Nixon endorsed checks for relief totaling over $25,000, 
which had been written to her personally in the few days before her departure. At George Chavez International Airport in Lima, Mrs. Nixon was warmly greeted by Mrs. Consuelo Velasco, wife of the president of Peru and other officials. I thank you for the warm welcome and for all these wonderful people who are out here to see us land. I must say that the plane is just loaded, not with people, but with things that I think that you can use in this country. I also bring greetings and affection from the people of the United States. And they want you to know that you're very much in their hearts. June 29th marked the annually observed religious holiday of Saints Peter and Paul. A special holiday mass in honor of the victims of the earthquake was held in the ornate cathedral in Lima. As Mrs. Nixon left the cathedral, many people crowded around her, welcoming her, thanking her for coming and making their own special requests for assistance. From the cathedral, the two first ladies traveled to the airport at Lima, where they and Mrs. Taylor Belcher boarded a cargo plane for a hair-raising flight over the Andes. At Anta, the first ladies were greeted by the mayor and other dignitaries, and then were briefed at length by the mayor on the needs of his area. The helicopter flight over the Wireless Valley was to be one of the most moving experiences Mrs. Nixon had had on any of her travels. High above the Wireless Valley, Mount Huascaran was rocked by the violent tremors, which dislodged a large piece of the mountainside. This great chunk of earth first fell into a glacial lake and then proceeded in a monstrous stream of mud, rock, water, and ice down the Wireless Valley at speeds approaching 248 miles per hour. In four minutes, the mud flow had traveled some 30 miles and tens of thousands of people were dead in its path. The valley was a wasteland of dried mud and it was impossible to forget those who are forever entombed beneath the tons of earth. Only a group of children attending a circus on a hillside escaped the avalanche which completely buried the city of Yungai leaving the children orphans. A statue of Christ remains standing majestically on a nearby hill. But below, all that could be seen were the tips of four palm trees which once towered 90 feet over the town plaza. Flying over cities of tents, which had been hastily flown in and erected, the helicopter hovered over the rubble that was once the city of Guaraz. In this town, which was once over 25,000 people, it had been particularly difficult for the 10,000 survivors even to locate the bodies of their family and friends. Mrs. Nixon traveled through the few streets that had been cleared. The wrenching force which had tore down three-story buildings and leveled entire blocks could hardly be comprehended. The immediate needs of emergency food and medical care were quickly met, but there remained the problem of putting sturdy roofs over the heads of the people. The winter rains and snows are severe and would take a terrible toll if adequate housing were not ready. Mrs. Nixon was encouraged by the efforts of Peruvian relief leaders and international volunteers. Some instructed the Peruvians in building temporary shelters, while others set up Quonset Hut living quarters and tent cities. But permanent shelter was the greatest need of the Peruvian people. As the helicopter rose from Warras for the return flight to Anta, it was obvious that the survivors, although momentarily cared for, were still in desperate need of help.
Upon returning to Anta, where the C-130 was ready for the trip back to Lima, Mrs. Nixon met the relief teams of doctors, mechanics, technicians, and Red Cross workers who were striving to get the country functioning once again. That evening, Mrs. Nixon dined at the Presidential Palace as the guest of President and Mrs. Velasco. The President expressed the heartfelt gratitude which he and his people feel for the assistance they have received in this time of great need. President Velasco emphasized that the crisis has not passed and that continuing aid will be deeply appreciated. On the final day of her visit to Peru, Mrs. Nixon met with leaders of American volunteer agencies and then accompanied Mrs. Velasco to the Han, a national assistance organization which is the Peruvian First Lady's personal project. Here, Mrs. Nixon met with more of the Peruvian people, still silent and reticent as a result of the disaster. The Han was mobilized to assist in the earthquake relief efforts as a center for the receiving, sorting, and distributing of all supplies which have been flown in. The problem of distribution was obvious, for materials which were badly needed in other parts of the country were piling up at the Han for lack of transportation. From the Han, Mrs. Velasco took Mrs. Nixon to the Hospital del Niños, a children's hospital. It was Mrs. Nixon's hope to bring cheer to these young survivors. Throughout the hospital were signs warning visitors not to speak of the earthquake, for many of the children were not only recovering from their physical injuries, but from the severe trauma of witnessing the worst natural disaster the Western Hemisphere has ever known. From a little girl who made a brave presentation speech, Mrs. Nixon received a bouquet of roses. She returned one to the child, indicating without the need of a translator, her affection for all of the children. From the children's hospital, Mrs. Nixon went directly to the Lima airport for the long return flight home. Mrs. Nixon resolved to continue her efforts to bring supplies and assistance to the Peruvian earthquake victims. The destruction which she had witnessed was far worse than she had expected. But Mrs. Nixon was confident that the generosity of the people of the United States and the world would cause them to help their South American neighbors rebuild. 